one thing that it is is that you really have to make a change in your mind like i was saying that i wanted help but i i wasn't acting like it like i didn't use my coping mechanisms i didn't try anything to get better but like i would always feel so worn out and i'm like i am trying why isn't it working Welcome to Adventure Tech Chats, Riley. Welcome to the show. Hello. So nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us today. What keeps you busy? So I was doing acting for a bit, and then eventually I found out that a lot of casting directors really liked to have people who had like a following on social media since it's such a big part in our society nowadays. So I started going on Instagram. And then I immediately fell in love with that. So now I mostly do influencing, basically uh, brand deals. Uh, I post like five times a day, oh so God. that's crazy. How, how do you yeah. Do this stuff like, what is the like? What? Where do you get your inspiration for for posting? I mean, five times a day is quite, quite a bit. <laughs> where do you even find the time? Um, you know, I usually take about an hour, hour and a half to make all my videos for a day. Um, and then throughout the day, I will have like alarms set my phone of when to post. But a lot of the inspiration I take is from like other creators that I watch or just like videos that I think are fun to make. And then obviously like whenever I have a tired day or a lazy day, I'll just like use a trending sound or a trending filter. But like, you know, I just, I try to always have fun with it because I know that if I don't, then it's going to start feeling like a chore. And it's something that I genuinely enjoy, so I don't want something that I enjoy to become a chore. Absolutely, no, I, I totally understand that. Are there any elements of because social media? I've I've seen, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies on this. Some people love it, some people hate it. You know, there's an underbelly to everything. Have you ever come across any uh, any challenges or struggles with social media? Definitely, definitely. Um, so first of all like the first thing is just like growing a following can be very difficult like it took me a very long time to get to where i am currently um but also like some of the people you meet in this like business are so so like mean and toxic and that's definitely like what i think the biggest struggle is also like sometimes you're not going to be able to like hang out with friends um, because you have an event, you have a meeting, you have to make content, like, so it's also definitely hard to make friends since a lot of your time is occupied by it. You mentioned that there was uh, some some toxic people in social media, which I bet a lot of people uh, can probably relate to you on that. Uh, yeah. I've heard of trolling before and all this stuff, and it's, how does someone in, you know, so young uh, kind of get through uh, you know, any difficult moments like that? Well, and what I'm, are specifically that, that you've sort of experienced? Uh, you, you can get as specific as you'd like, but I'm sure people are wondering, you know, what you've been through and how you overcame it. Um, so actually, I'm really good with dealing with, like, fake people, and I'm really good at cutting people out. Um, I was severely bullied in fifth grade, actually, which led me to getting um, severe depression and anxiety. Um, obviously, I have gone through a ton of like therapy and coping mechanisms. So um, I'm honestly at a point in my life where uh, I'm letting everything happen. So if I run into someone who is toxic or not nice or I don't want to be around, then I will just let them out of my life. I'm not going to try to keep them there, but I'm also not going to try to force them away. I'm just going to let what happens, like, happens. I'm not going to force anything. If it's meant to be, then it is. If it's not, then it's not. That's a very insightful philosophy for such a young person, I have to say. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, like, so bullying can take on many different shapes and different various types of degrees, and some is uh, maybe perhaps more blatant than others. 
What were some types of bullying that you ran into in your past? You can go all the way back to fifth grade if you'd like, uh, but just out of curiosity. Well, um, so I'm actually homeschooled now, so I no longer face that except for online stuff, which like I'm used to at this point, like I can take it. But um, I use the term severely loosely, like I wasn't being like physically hurt, but it affected me a ton. And it led to, you know, depression, anxiety, self-harm, like stuff like that. So in fifth grade, there were basically a group of people who just started picking on me for no reason, uh, I, literally out of nowhere. And then eventually the bullying got worse and worse. They eventually turned the whole entire class around on me. So um, I was feeling very left out. I am also very much a people pleaser. So having a bunch of people dislike me for no reason and I can't find out why, and then nitpicking every single thing about me really like brought down my confidence and like really hurt me because I just wanted people to like me. I still want people to like me. Um, so that's definitely where it started. And then I also noticed that I have, uh, I always have one person that I'm attached to, but for the longest time, the people that I were attached to were just not nice people who would take advantage of me, use me, spread rumors about me. Um, my best friend in sixth grade went as far as literally sending me death threats, telling me that I should have killed myself in fifth grade. Whoa. Like, mm -hmm. it was. Kids yeah. are mean. Sometimes. Kids are mean, especially sixth graders. Jesus. Oh yeah, that's a that's a challenging time to be mm -hmm. sure. That's a weird age. Yeah. But I'm I'm so glad. It sounds like you were able to get through that. How did you kind of cope? What were some of the coping mechanisms that you used to get through? I mean to be ostracized by an entire class and then uh, to have your best friend turn their back on you at such a pivotal moment in life when you're so, you know, young people are so impressionable. Sixth grade is very young. Yeah, uh, actually was... the fifth and fourth grade best friend was 10 times worse. Oh my God, yeah. and you traded down. Oh God, it's, there's a lot of learning that goes on in those ages yeah. and I'm wondering what did what did you learn as you went through that? And like, how did you pull yourself out on the other side? I know you mentioned, you know, you had some uh, issues and, and some self-harm issues, which a lot of people can relate to. What would you say was the ultimate, like what pulled you through? What mo Did you have any mantras that you told yourself or uh, any, anything specific that made you able to cope with an entire isolation of a class and then losing two best friends, it sounds like? There must be something to that you're still standing here today. Well, actually, it's kind of a long story, but like you said, I have time. So um, about one and a half, almost two years ago is when I finally got through it. Um, I obviously still suffer with anxiety and depression. Um, I wouldn't use the term suffer, but like, you know, I have it, but I'm able to work through it. Um, but during those couple of years, um, when I was first getting bullied in fifth grade, I came to my best friend at the time and I was just kind of ranting to her. I ended up telling her that I wanted to kill myself. And she was like, you know, I was a fifth grader, I was being dramatic, but you know, she ended up telling her parents and then her parents told mine and I got put into a mental hospital. So, uh, you know, a year or two passes and I, you know, I come to my mom one day and I was like, look, like, I know I've said that I've been getting better, but I really haven't. Like, I've been feeling worse and worse. And then like all of this drama with sixth grade, because, you know, sixth graders in middle school, they're crazy. But um, then I think after COVID, I went really really downhill especially during 2021 um during the year of 2021 i think i was in and out of mental hospitals four times um i was really struggling with self-harm i was you know having really bad like eating habits um i would try to isolate myself but also i would try to cling on to people around me 
I was going through therapy. I was taking medicine. I still take medicine,、um, but I don't see it as a bad thing. I feel like it's just a way to help me. But、um, and, and said, I'm sorry to to cut in, but in 2021 you said it got worse. Do you think that was related at all to to COVID or just happenstance? I think it was just something inside of my brain. I feel like I was just getting so caught up and dragging myself down more and more.、Um, so like with everything going on, like. Any time that I would go into the hospital or I would self harm, or something like that, I would always feel guilty, and I feel like that guilt, like, just made it ten times worse as well. Well, you have to. It sounds like you found a way to for, forgive yourself and and to kind of、uh, rise above that. That's a、uh, that's so important for people to hear too. You know, don't be don't be so hard on yourself. You know. Life is short, but it but it's also long. So you know, definitely be a better friend to yourself. And it sounds like you've you've found that messaging、um, in your、uh, in your journey in your journey. So how are you feeling now? I'm feeling a lot better, honestly.、Um, I am a year and a half clean on Self Farm, so I have also started like trying to get like healthier habits, like eating better, drinking more water.、Um, Hang out with friends more, being more social, focusing on my school.、Um, you know, I've just been trying to find more ways to keep myself occupied whenever I am feeling down, and I constantly tell myself like, "You're feeling bad right now, but honestly, it is temporary because like, if you were able to pull yourself out of that, you're able to pull yourself out of anything. But one thing that it is is that you really." Have to make a change in your mind. Like I was saying that I wanted help, but I I wasn't acting like it. Like I didn't use my coping mechanisms. I didn't try anything to get better. But like I would always feel so worn out, and I'm like, I am trying. Why isn't it working? But it was because I just hadn't made a decision in my mind that I wanted to get better because I was using it as a crutch. Very interesting insight. I,、uh, that's that's a mouthful. Absolutely, mouthful. <laughs> so great that you that you caught onto that so、uh, yeah. so soon in life. Also, because、yeah. my mom it, definitely had to snap me out of it. So, like the last time I went into the hospital, she like we sat down while we were in the waiting room. We had like a big talk, and then once I got out, I was like, you know what, I'm. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna get better. I'm really gonna put in the effort. I'm all of this, and now I'm a year and a half clean, and I am doing great. I think that's true of like a lot of things too, and it's so great that you have your mom for that kind of guidance and stuff because you have to want in all things. You know, if you if you want to get fit, you have to want it. If you、yeah. want to get mentally, you know, clean, you you have to want it, and it's、yeah. uh, it's so.、Uh, Insightful that you that you realize that too at such a young age, and that it seems to be working really well for you. So, well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. By、yeah, the way,、sure. that's such an incredible story for for people to hear and to know that they're not alone too. I I、yeah. know there's lots of people who feel probably just like that and just don't have the ability or really the the courage to come out and talk about it. Everyone feels like they're sort of these isolated soldiers, just kind of living their life, and it's so nice to be able to. Uh, have someone that puts it out there. You're really reaching out to a lot of people right now, and I want to thank you for sharing that with all of us. So, onto something、uh, maybe more frivolous. What what are you what are you looking forward to in the upcoming year? Okay, in the upcoming year,、uh, I'm really excited for Playlist.、Uh, that's basically a big like, it's a big influencing event where influencers from all across the country come together. And I went last year, and I made like so many friends, and that was like, that was like peak moment of my life. Like that was amazing. I loved it there.、Um, Wait, play like a party in Florida? Yeah, it's kind of a party.、Um, it's like it's a, it's more an event. So there's influencers that come, but then there's also people who aren't influencers that come, whether they want to like. Try to become influencers, or whether they want to meet people that like they really look up to. 
So it's a really, really huge thing. Um, like convention, kind of. Yeah, it's a convention. Yeah. Have you ever heard of VidCon? I sadly, I live under a shell, so. But <laughs> I, it's uh... kind of the same thing as that, but it's like it's okay. a convention, basically. Oh, cool, cool, and uh, a place to make friends and find like-minded people who like you, and it's uh, well, that's a great way to find friends too, is to find people who enjoy doing the same things and. Uh, and to work with uh, like-minded people. So it sounds like you, you've you really figured it out at such a young age, it's, it's incredible. We uh, we can't thank you enough, Riley, for, for coming on the show and, and sharing your story and, and really making an impact in a lot of people's lives, people who maybe thought they were alone out there, but now, now this too shall pass in a way. Yeah. And that if you just keep going, this too shall pass. And so I wanna thank you for sharing that and getting uh, really vulnerable with us and, and, and showing everyone out there that it's okay and you'll get through this and there's joy on the other side. So yeah. thank you so much, Riley, for coming on the show and chatting with us. Yeah, of course.